journalized Mustang properties following stock issuance transactions. On June 19th, they issued 1,000 shares of $1 par common stock for cash of $8 per share. So let's think about what it's telling us here. We're issuing 1,000 shares, which we've set at a dollar par, par value, but we're selling them for $8 per share. So how much cash are we getting? We're getting $8,000 in cash because we're selling 1,000 shares at $8 a piece. Common stock is recorded in the books at par. No matter what you sell it for, it's recorded at par. So we're going to credit common stock at the par value. So we sold 1,000 shares that has a par value of $1 per share. So the common stock is credited for $1,000. But we don't balance. This is because of that new account we saw in the stockholders' equity section. It's called paid in capital in excess of par. Well, we issued this stock $7 above par. That's what's in excess of par. So our paid in capital in excess of par common stock would be $7,000. And now we balance. On July 3rd, we sold, when we're talking about stock, sold and issued are synonymous. They're the same. So we issued or sold 300 shares of 4% no par preferred stock for $15,000. So let's talk about a few things. Look at the 4%. That is your dividend rate or your dividend yield. 4%. So it really isn't, that isn't really playing a part in this particular scenario as we're just journalizing the transaction. And dividends isn't part of this transaction. So this is also a no par preferred stock. So anytime you have a no par preferred stock, you journalize it as if you are issuing it at par. So we're getting cash of $15,000, and because it's a no par stock, we're treating it as if it were issued at par. So we would credit preferred stock for the $15,000. On July the 11th, we received equipment with market value of $20,000 and we issued 3,000 shares of our $1 par common stock for this equipment. When you're getting an asset other than cash for an issuance of stock, you're going to record that asset at its market value. Now note here, it's really only $3,000 par value of common stock. But stock is very volatile. It goes up and down. Our stock could be worth $20,000 right now. Those 3,000 3, shares could be worth $20,000. That's the reason we're giving them 3,000 shares for this $20,000 piece of equipment. That's highly likely. So equipment will be recorded at the market value because of that stock volatility. But remember, common stock is always recorded at the par value. So we're going to credit common stock for that $3,000. 3,000 shares that are a dollar par value each. And do you remember what the difference would be? Right, paid in capital in excess of par, $17,000. That's just a plug figure there. The next question before I go to the next slide, we want to calculate or prepare the paid in capital section of our stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. So look at our transactions here and think about what actually will appear in the paid in capital section. Remember, if you're asked to calculate total paid in capital, you are not simply looking at the paid in capital in excess of par. That account is part of paid in capital, but it is not total paid in capital. Remember, the paid in capital section of the, of the, owner, of the stockholders' equity, equity section on the balance sheet contains preferred stock, common stock, and paid in capital in excess of par. So those three things would appear in the paid in capital section. So we go get our preferred stock, which was 15000 
our common stock, which was 4000 and our, our paid in capital in excess of par, I believe there were two transactions with that, which totaled $24,000. If we add up the three, we get total paid in capital of $43,000.